hello, my friend. Thank you for giving us this opportunity to come your way through this Ambassador of Hope telecast. The message you are going to see and hear has been specially put together with you in mind. You and I know that we live in a, a world that is full of pain, discouragement, disillusionment, and lost hope. But we believe that in God, there's no hopeless situation. God can turn your situation around. Wherever you may be, or whatever stage you may be in right now, is not a dead road. The bend in the road is not the end of the road. And we believe that by following these messages, God is going to turn your situation around. So I want you to sit down, relax, enjoy this message, and I'll come back to you in a short while. Enjoy. Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. We've taught many times Philippians was not written by Brother Philip, but Paul the Apostle, by the agency of the Holy Spirit, penned these powerful words to us. Paul wrote this letter when he was in prison. He wasn't in prison in Philippi. If you know your Bible, you remember that Paul had a vision. And an angel spoke to him in the vision and said, come over to Macedonia and help us. Now hear me. Maybe you are wondering when is he going to start preaching off already. Jesus taught a lot. So let me teach you. The church needs more teaching than preaching. Because I believe that information is better than inspiration. Because a day will come that you don't feel inspired. It's the information that you have. Amen? He didn't say my people perish for lack of inspiration. You can be inspired and still, you can be inspired and still expire. But you need information. Somebody say information. You see, information that is illuminated by the Holy Spirit becomes revelation. Amen? The Bible says that the angel said to Paul, come over to Macedonia and help us. How many of you agree with me that it was a genuine call? Two and a half people. Have a job for life. How many of you know that it was a genuine call? The angel that Paul saw was not a bird that followed cows. It was a genuine angel. And yet when he went and he preached, there was a girl with the spirit of Python, spirit of divination. We all know the story in Acts chapter 16. Paul and Silas, they ended up in jail. Which means sometimes as you pursue God, things may not always be straightforward for you. Sometimes stepping into the will of God can even end you up in pain. That is what we've got to understand. Because sometimes we have this mentality about Christianity that we have written into it an adversity exclusion clause. That so long as I go to all nations, or so long as I do God a favor by showing up in church, he has no right to allow anything to happen to me except good. Maybe you got your Christianity from another source and not in the Bible you are reading. Am I helping somebody? Please don't look at me like it's only the first of the year. Yeah, it gets worse before it gets better. But out of that experience, Paul planted a church in, in the jail. The Philippian jailer and all his family got saved and baptized that same night. Which means God has a purpose in your pain. So don't waste your purpose. Don't waste your pain. Because many times, the purpose of God is planted in our pain. So Paul had a church over there in, in, in Philippi. And he loved the church. He made allusions to them in several of his letters. And according to scholars, he was in jail in Rome. And he wrote this letter to the Philippians. He loved them. He actually said that, I want you to know that the things that have happened to me has actually turned out for the preaching of the gospel. So that even my bodyguards and the jealous and people in, in the house of Caesar have become born again. What a general. And in verse number 12, along the lines of our word for the year, year of pursuit, he said, I know that I have already attained or I'm already perfected, but I press on. I love it. I press on. That I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the price of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. 
Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful story. God has given us a proceeding word for 2016. And the word is that it is, this is our year of pursuit. Amen. And I believe that it is to prepare us and to position us for what he has in store for us. Hear me and hear me well, people of God. Never proceed in your life without a direction from God. You didn't hear me. I said never proceed in your life without a direction from God. Because when God gives you the green light, you become unstoppable. When God says go, you become unstoppable. Nothing can stop you. People may be able to delay you temporarily, but they will never be able to delay you permanently. Is somebody hearing me? There may be barriers and obstacles, but so long as God has said go, you better go to the glory of his name. When Israel departed Egypt, God said that go, I'm taking you into the promised land. And the Bible says that as they left Egypt, they were faced with a barrier, a barrier of impossibility called the Red Sea. And Israel began to complain and cry, but Moses prayed. And the Lord said to Moses, get up and tell the children of Israel, go forward. Listen, in spite of any obstacle that the enemy may raise against you in 2016, the word of God is saying to somebody that pursue, have an absolute disrespect for barriers and obstacles that the enemy will place before you. When they cut off your legs, crawl. When they cut off your hands, roll. No matter what it is, it is straight forward ahead because there is a prize, there is a mark, there is a destiny that is calling you and I in 2016. If all the years behind you have stagnated you tonight, every contract that you have with stagnation is torn apart from today every contract every agreement that you have with cycles of defeat and frustration God sent me all the way to make an announcement and a declaration that it is over I have I come as a spiritual attorney and I cancel every contract with stagnation this year you will move forward this year you will press on this year no matter what comes in your life you will see marked differences in your life if you couldn't save money, you will you save money. If you couldn't do things, you'll do things. If you could not finish your assignment in the name of the Lord, in this year of pursuit, you shall finish it to the glory of, of his name. If that is you, say yes. yes. We, are, we are serious about pursuit. Like the horses that we saw, we are running at top speed. Is somebody hearing me? Listen to me, people of God. Nothing in this life I've learned by experience. That nothing in this life will wait for you. Nothing. It's not going to wait for you. Some of you have been waiting a long time. You have to be serious about getting up to make a move. Because my mentor and my spiritual father said that life will not give you what you deserve. Life will give you what you demand. There must be a fire in your belly. There must be some fire in your eyes. That if this is what God has promised me, I'm going for it. Is somebody hearing me? You must have that desire. That, he has, that is what vision is all about. Vision drives you. Vision moves you. Vision lets you discipline yourself. This year we shall have the Olympic Games in Rio, in Brazil. The one who wants to win a medal does not wake up with six-pack beer. They may love Heineken's. They may love Budweiser. Say, how does he know on television? I saw the advert. But hear me. The discipline, the boss said that I put my body under subjection. The old king just says, I, I, I buffet my body. Somebody saw it and decided that word is buffet. So I buffet my body. No, no, no. I buffet my body. I beat my body. And I put it under subjection. I don't shadow box. I don't beat about the bush. I am, I am, I am intensely focused on an assignment. And this year, you must be focused on your assignment. And desire to, be, to, to reach your goal by the end of the year. And hear me. The proof of desire is pursued. If you desire something, you pursue it. Paul said, I, I love the scripture. Now, here is a man, hear me. Here is a man 
who I consider to be the greatest example for Jesus that Christianity ever produced. Handkerchiefs and aprons from his body could heal the sick. The only one who went to the third heavens, the abode of God, and heard and saw things inexpressible that was not even given permission to talk about. I'm talking about the man that carried intensity of revelation in his heart and communicated it with his pen. It was so powerful, so deep, that even Peter, the hand-picked fisherman, wrote and said that the things that our brother Paul talks about beats my imagination. I'm talking about St. Paul the Apostle. And you wonder that if this is the credential of this man, Reverend, what else can a person want? If it were me, honestly, I rest on my, on my laurels and I'll check the young boys and when they start, i say, you don't know. When were we? Where were you? But Paul, in the light of something, he said, there's a price ahead of me. That price is the upward call that is in Christ. There's a destiny, there's a destination that I was born to fulfill. And in the light of that price and that call, what I have attained right now is nothing. Hear me, where you are right now is not all there is to be. What you have achieved is not all there is to be achieved. That is why this year is the year of pursuit. There's something. There's, that is what des destiny is all about. Destiny ties up with the word destination. You are getting somewhere. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't get your destination in the middle of the road. You see the end and you press towards it. As you drive, sometimes your gas will go, will go low. You turn aside, you do a pit stop, get more gas, and you press on. Your tire may go flat. You change the tire and you go on. That is what Christianity is all about. And I have come here under the command of God Almighty to begin to energize somebody and let the person understand that there is something ahead of you that you must get in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. If you don't have a destiny call, when you have not located your destiny call, little things become impressive. When you are not serious about what God has for you, little things become attractive. Many of you are easily swayed by little, little things. Hear me, if third graders begin to clap for you, that you are very good, you need, you need to cry. Like I've told you, if, if you are 10 years old and they tell you you have potential, be happy. Be very happy because you have potential. If by the age of 30, they are still telling you you have potential, get worried. Be afraid, very afraid. And at the age of 45, they are still saying, oh, you have potential. Brother, get Kleenex and start crying. Because when are you going to leave potential and get to the real thing? Is somebody hearing me? Oh, somebody didn't hear me. Paul said that in the light of what is ahead of me, I press forward. Somebody say press. press. Somebody say press. press. Ladies and gentlemen, there must be a press in you. One of the observations that I've made that bothers me in Christianity is that too many people lack fight. You give up too easily. If I was not a fighter, I would not be standing here. And nobody gives medals to people who don't fight. By the way, not fight one another. I'm talking about fighting for life. Because I saw somebody say, ha, 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 ha. they did a sign of cross. No. Please, let there be peace. But I'm talking about a fight. Fire on the inside of you. A fire that doesn't give up. That says that if this is what God has said, I am going for it. I'm not asking for second opinions from people because people will give you opinions based on their own worldview. And on the first Sunday like this, only three people clapped. So what is going to happen when we're in the middle of the road? If you have run with footmen and they have worried you, how can you contend with horses? Today's generation lacks fight. We have this instant gratification mentality. So we go for the power ball. Has anybody won it? I pray for you. I pray for you. Hey. But Paul said that there's a call. Somebody say call. There's a price. And this is how he does it. He said forgetting the things that are behind. Now hear me. Paul was not talking about only bad things that were behind. Because when you check the whole context, he was talking even about knowing him, that I may know. And I'm asking Paul, after all this, you still want to know him? Because hear me, you and I serve a God that is awesome. 
Peter talks about the multifaceted grace of God. The Hebrews, the Jews have a view of God that is amazing. And in the explanation in modern day Loganville English, he said, God, that you can look at him this way. And you think you know him and you turn around and look at him again as he's not the same. That is the kind of God that I'm talking about. You see, Job thought that he knew him. And Job began to wax eloquent. And Job talked, and Job talked, and Job talked, and Job talked. And God said, Job, hold on. And let me ask you a few questions. Who has darkened counsel? Who has been the counselor of God? Job, you think you know me? Let me ask you a question. Where were you? When I hung the solar system in space upon nothing. And the sons of the morning clapped their hands in wonder. Where, where were you, Job, when I called the morning to make, an, to make no announcement and yet call the sun to rise uh, with alacrity and with precision uh, that it rises and it sets at the same time. Job, where were you? Can you explain to me how Leviathan is drawn from the deep? And can you explain to me how the mountain goats were formed in the deeps of their mothers? Where were you, Job, when I laid the foundation upon this nothing and I called the Pleiades and the Masaroth and the Orion and the Actoros? Where were you? And Job said, oh God, oh God, oh God, I've only heard of you by the reason of my ears, but now my eyes have seen you and I repent in cycle and ashes. Ladies and gentlemen, when you begin to catch a revelation of God, uh, you can begin to understand that this God that we serve is a mighty God. He's a powerful God. He's a God that goes beyond our little mentality. It is time to make God big. It is time to exalt him. It is time to magnify him. That mountain before you is not as big as you as God Almighty. That valley before you is not as deep as your God. Uh, whatever it is today, introduce your God to your situation and let your God be God. The psalmist said, let God God arise and Paul said that I forget you see I have attained a whole lot of things but I forget the things that are behind me church the greatest enemy to the incoming move is the outgoing move the greatest enemy to the incoming wave is the outgoing wave that is why old people especially in church they stop young people I'm working anybody. Thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Everywhere you go, it's the same thing. The old mosquitoes. No, what, what, what was that? Then? You, you, think, you, you are only babes. You know, there's this guy that we used to worship with. Everybody was a babe. He said, you, you are just a babe. When somebody speaks, oh, you, this preacher, you are a babe. He, he's, we have been babes up to now. We've grown beards. We've grown all kinds. That we are still babes. God said that I make an intentional effort to forget the things that are behind me. It means I don't, like, I don't allow my past experiences to define my future experiences. People that lack a fight, people that lack vision, they spend all their life celebrating the past. When you have no, no more new victories, you chaperone the old ones. When you don't have new testimonies, you continually talk about the old ones. Many years ago, I lived in a nation. Long, long time ago, 1966, they won the Soccer World Cup, 66, 1966. They beat West Germany. That, that time it was West Germany and East Germany. They beat West Germany 4-1. Up to today, they even argue about a goal, whether it scored or didn't score. They make lies, technology, all kinds. 1966. Long time ago, buddy. Long time ago. They won that thing. They beat Germany 4-1. Remember very well. Alan Ball and all those guys. He's ball and he plays ball. Charting. You know. And some years later, I lived in that nation and they celebrated their 25th anniversary of winning the World Cup. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> they were celebrating their 25th anniversary of the 1966 when they won. I mean, what is wrong with you guys? Because today, in those days, a nation could capture another nation and beat them 10-1. Today, there are no more small nations. They will show you where the bullets lie. Small, small, small little islands. You'll be sorry. Even today, America. America is even beating Ghana today. America, America. Even America is making Ghanaians keep quiet. But hear me. Don't let your past define you. Let me throw it in. Am I doing okay so far? Hear me. I don't know who I'm talking to. But don't, don't let the past bad people define your present good people. Amen. I said, don't allow your past bad 
people to defy your present good people. Because some people can make you not trust any human being on earth. Some people can do things for you and you may think that everybody is like that. Listen, everybody is not like that. Whoever did you bad doesn't represent humanity. Adolf Hitler does not represent Germany. Is somebody hearing me? So, listen. Paul said, I press forward. And this year, I want to position you this first Sunday of this year to reach forth. Stop the daydreaming. Stop the wishing. Stop the eternal hoping. Because hope is not a good strategy. And begin to pursue. I said begin to pursue. I'm going to give you four things, four quick things to help you as we begin our journey in the year of our pursuit. So if you are writing, number one, prepare. It's a year of pursuit. And every one of them is going to start with a P. P. That word P is a very powerful word. P. P. When it's a silent pee, it really tr- causes trouble. I, I don't understand, Pastor Ronnie, this your English language business. How somebody's name can start with P, and yet when you are calling them, you say F. Philippians starts with P. Like a woman called Philomena, who went to hospital. Where I was born, when you go to hospital, you go to a desk and a nurse writes your name. So she went and the woman said, the nurse said, what is your name? The woman said, Philomena Mensa. And the nurse said, spell the Philomena. And the one who owned the Philomena also said to the nurse, you are the nurse, you are writing, write it. <laughs> and the nurse said, but that is your name, you spell it. They said, no, but you have the pen, you spell it. <laughs> Became a tag of war. So they had to find a compromise. So the man said, if this is going to trouble, you just write P, P Mensa. So, <laughs> Philip, you can just write P. But number one, prepare. <laughs> Somebody say prepare. prepare. You can have fun in church. Amen. Amen. Hear me. If you are ever going to do a good pursuit in life, you must learn to prepare. Preparation is the breakfast for champions. It's the food for winners. Every area of your life demands preparation because preparation is the down payment for manifestation. You need to prepare yourself, ladies and gentlemen, because when preparation is in place, success follows. Second Chronicles chapter 27 verse 6, the Bible says, And Jotham became mighty because he prepared his ways before the Lord. Jotham became mighty because he prepared his ways before the Lord. There must be preparation. Church, don't take life willy-nilly as it comes. You must be intentional in preparing yourself for what God has for you. All through the scriptures, you see God preparing people. Listen, God has to prepare you for what he has prepared for you. I said, God has to prepare you for what he has prepared for. A lot of the things that you and I are going through is nothing but preparation for where he's taking us to. Other than that, you are going to get there and you find out that you are not ready for it. Is somebody hearing me? God has to prepare you. When he wanted to teach me wisdom, he didn't send me to any of the big five animals in Africa. He said, go to the end, O sluggard. Proverbs 6 and 6, consider its ways and be wise. It has no guide, no ruler, no overseer, but prepares his food, its food in the summer. The, 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 the ant knows that a winter will come, a winter where there's nothing, a day will come where there will be hard times. So once the going is good, I need to prepare, I need to set something aside, I need to put some money aside, I need to put some something into the bank account, I need to put some account into my relationship accounts, I need to build good friends so that one day when I'm in trouble i can make a withdrawal preparation ladies and gentlemen is vital in life sometimes preparation may feel like a waste of time but there's always a reward so this year this year of your pursuit please do away with this fast track mentality and do some serious preparation put in some time for god 
every time around January, just as the gyms are full, churches are full. But very soon as the grind is not going to happen, I'm preaching to the world, so it's not you. So well, you, not here. Slowly you begin to see people, begin to vacillate. But you must determine that this year, I'm pursuing God. And I'm not allowing anything to stop me. As I have started, so I am finishing. I am pressing. Somebody say press. Somebody say press. So please prepare yourself. Have time for God. Have some morning devotions. Have some time. We saw that putting those things behind. Before you grab the social media, please grab God. Before you go to Facebook, face God. He says, I love those who love me. And those who seek me early will find me. He said in Jeremiah that you will go and you will search for me. And you will find me when you search for me with all your heart. That must come back to church. Ladies and gentlemen, there must be a holy preparation in our lives. Have time for God. Put in some preparation. Listen, if you are not yet married, put in some preparation for marriage. Only three. And the, the thing that hurts me is that the amens are coming from people who are already married. And they are married and saying, give it to me quickly, let me go. No! Prepare yourself. God has to... Listen, I know you want, you want the right person, but have you been the right? Because you are looking for the right man. The right man is looking for the right you. And you all serve a very good God who doesn't want their children to suffer. So why must God let you go when you are not prepared? How many single seminars have you attended? How many books on marriage have you read? Because hear me, don't think you know marriage. You don't know it. No, don't think about don't, don't elbow anybody. Listen. <laughs> when I went quiet, I was voting against some things. <laughs> Prepare for marriage. Attend the seminars. How many CDs on marriage have you bought? Have you invested in? To prepare yourself for this thing. I have seen a lot. I have, even in this house we have some. A lot of wedding planners. I still haven't met a marriage planner. Because the wedding is not a marriage. The wedding is a... We spend so many hours. Hours. And I sit back and I watch and I say to myself, I wonder whether they are prepared for marriage. That is why during marriage ceremony, wedding ceremonies here, I don't preach. Because the moment you appear before me, it's too late. It's too late. And besides, they won't even listen. They have their minds on other matters. Say, do it. Kill me quick. Let me just go. Because love is blind. Marriage will wake you up. Because the very next day, you are going to see her without makeup and say, hey... And you know they'll drill. A lot of the things that they bring to the wedding, they, it's not theirs. I saw one at a wedding right here. I had to step back because of the eyelashes. They were long. They, this, and I said, when I saw, I said, do you have malaria? Like, this, you, you are not yourself. Are you? Then I said, oh. Then two weeks later, I saw the person and said, ah. <laughs> like I had to do like this. I hope this message has spoken into some interesting and intimate places in your life and that you've been blessed and you've been encouraged by the word of God. You know something? We are still of the persuasion that there's nothing that is too late. There's nothing that is too far gone that God cannot help. And there's no barrier that is strong enough to stop you. The beautiful thing is that we have a church right here in this city, the Carey's House, where Sunday, Wednesday, Fridays, we have some very amazing times in the presence of God. And I want to specially invite you to any of our services. The information will be given on your screen, and I hope to meet you there. Finally, I want to say thank you again for tuning in into this broadcast. I hope to see you on the next episode on this same station. 
Meanwhile, this is your Ambassador of Hope, Franco Fosuapia. I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye. Advanced Life in Relentless Pursuit of Leadership Excellence.